We are here. We're having a happy game. So we're doing it a little bit different this week. Um, yeah. this now we've moved on to like the real life scenarios of the book. So um first scenario. Uh I'll go ahead and read it out loud. Um you and your coworker Brandon started working at at the at the company around the same time. You believe that you're both pretty similar when it comes to your skill set, personality, and drive. Out of ten people on your team, you are you two are the best. However, the promotion side goes to Brandon, not you. What would you do? Yes. So mm -hmm. I love that, and I'm gonna relay it to how I have seen that happen, how it's happened to me, kind of like all in the mix, but. You know, in the perspective of like 90s R&B, right, where, uh, you know, you had Usher out and whoever else was competing with Usher. Let me say, let's do Monica and Brandy, for example. They both came out talented. They did great. I, my opinion in that scenario, what I would do is what I've seen done is like you got to focus on you and stay in your bubble and be the best you you can be because your journeys are different so while you guys have similar skill sets you have to realize that you and have the perspective and be optimistic of like I got a long way to go like it's not up because then you have Monica and Brandy and then you have Beyonce come through right here like this you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so it's like imagine if Brandy uh, Beyonce took the rattle and was like oh you know what I mean like I could be in, you know, not even the mindset. It's all about you staying in your mind and staying focused. And so that's how I see it too, where it's like, that's good for him. You know what I mean? Let me applaud him, cheer him on, see what he did. You know what I mean? Take notes, but also like work on myself and stay focused on myself and not let it get me down. But if anything, build me up. So that's what I think about it. I agree. I agree. I use, uh, I guess, more of a real life example because when I was working at a finance company a while back, like there were oftentimes, like I started out at entry level, which is customer service. And then like you kind of like you can apply for different departments and go this way or that way or do whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, like, you know, like I wasn't like super cool with a lot of people, but, you know, there's a few people that, you know, I was attached to and that I thought was, you know, we were like, you know, similar and you know, kind of like, I don't know, we were, I don't know, we clicked. Anyway, so um, time came where uh, it was like, you get to a certain point where you're able to like move on and fill out an application and go to a different department where you can get more pay and, you know, whatever, whatever. But uh, we both filled up for a certain department. I didn't get that department. However, they got it, but we still, like, we still remain close, and, like, they would tell me, like, things about, like, how it worked in their department and what things that they had to, you know, do versus what they used to do and stuff like that, and I was like, ooh, yeah, I mean, you got that. That's cool. I might not even be interested in that <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so yeah. I got an opportunity to actually, and it was, like, uh, crazy because I got an opportunity to help out in the mail room, which... I volunteered for it, but technically, like, even my entry level status, it was still like higher up than the mail room. So it was actually like a, a step backwards. But because I didn't want to be on the phones, like, answer the phones all day, I was like, okay, well, why not? But when I got in the mail room, I got training on like what to look for, like, on, and the, then the payments come in, like, different stuff, like, when the payments come in. And I got a different skill set. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, mm -hmm. like, they prepared me for when I did put in my application to go work in the title department, mm -hmm. I already had certain things that I learned in that position that had I not volunteered, had I not, had I got promoted when I wanted to get promoted, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to get into that, that, that volunteer position. And then once I got into that volunteer position, the information that I learned there, I was able to actually take it with me and actually excel in a different position, which yeah. I like that a lot better. And they, I mean, not saying not to like compare or anything like that. Like they got the job that they wanted at the time. Yeah. They didn't get the job that I wanted at the time. However, I, I stayed focused on it and I kept on working, even though, you know, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but it it wasn't bad or anything. It actually taught me something new. So that you ended yeah, up it worked, yeah, it worked yeah. out for me. And I think that that's the way it should always be. Like when you see like your someone, you should be congratulating them and stuff like that. You never know what's for, like what's for you is for you. What's not for you is not for you. 
Um, there's been plenty of times where I wanted to be in a position that necessarily I thought it was for me, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> That's real. That's 100%. I love that because, um, yeah, oftentimes, not oftentimes, all the time, like there is that part. where we're meant to go. You know what I'm saying? But we will not get there if we get discouraged or, or like see anything in a negative light. Like everything is happening for our greatest good, you know? And so once we go with the flow, it might not be in the direction that we had in mind, but it's not for us to understand we have to, you know what I mean? Like in everything okay. happens, you know, essentially and for I've a reason. Been so hot headed and into my own, like in my own self, I would have been so upset that I didn't get the position. And, oh, I'm not going above and beyond anymore. I'm not doing anything that doesn't, you know, whatever, whatever. And then I would have never probably volunteered for that mail room. And then all of a sudden the things that I learned while I was working in the mail room, I wouldn't have never been able to say, hey, well, I got this skill set too when I did get ready to apply for something. You know what I mean? So Definitely. yeah, it kind of like worked out and it's great or good. But I mean, a lot of people have that, you know, a lot of people get envious when stuff like that happens. Like they think <laughs> that, oh, well, now them and such and such can't be friends or they can't, you know, I mean, like still can't hang. Like we had a thing where we went out on Fridays and everybody got paid and we'd go drink and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Like, oh, I got stories. Yeah, I, I have my <laughs> own story because I've been competitive. Or let me say I've been ambitious since day one, and I didn't know how to handle losing with that ambition. And I lost, you know, a lot. So I used to do pageants in high school. And, you know, I was coming out of middle school to high school um, and did it until, like, I was a junior. And I remember my first pageant. No, maybe it was like the second one because I had lost a couple of times. I was like, what the heck? You know, <laughs> and so I went up to the judges like low key heated, but still like, hee -hee, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. This girl, Blair, she got first place. Cool, super cool. And like, we're still connected to this day. <laughs> she got first place and I got runner up and I went up to the judges and I was like, why did she win? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I did not understand it. I was mad. I was sad. I would cry. And it wasn't until I went to another pageant, maybe like a year or two later, and I saw this other girl. I had got, I don't even think I placed at all. And this other girl got first runner up. Honey, when I tell you Mary Ann threw that goddamn plaque out the window, we were in the car behind her. I was like, damn, that's how I be acting sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be that first. And I'm sure she's <laughs> like, we were kids and younger. And so, all to say like man <laughs> it's it, it hard sometimes and it, it takes learning and so it's okay if you've been that it just it's ultimately you know I ended up when it ended up not even liking like what it took to you know have a crown and everything and it was like not as bad as I thought and it taught me a lot like public speaking like that was the whole point like I was able to learn a lot of things skills that I still use to this day and that was the ultimate thing and so literally everything happens for a reason but yeah sometimes it'll you can you know what I mean get down on yourself but it's uh, a lesson to learn to not do that you know what I mean to develop and grow out of that right. um sure yeah <laughs> Man, I don't know how we're gonna do this. Like, I mean, we're gonna try to do like one scenario a day. Like, we have another minute. Yeah. Maybe we can um, tap it. Oh, well, we can go. Okay, so we don't have a Okay, so we can kind of like, um, okay, because uh, Gary put a, a block in here about uh, like this is like his suggestions when you're reading the scenarios. And like taking it and uh, taking a look at your reactions, like mm -hmm. um, we can say what we want to say, but mm -hmm. like for the people that's watching, what did you really feel at that time? Like when you heard that scenario, did you feel a little bit of the? Did you feel were you triggered in some way? Like he kind of like points out that if you uh, have like the, well, that sounds easier said than done type of like attitude, then you might be triggered. And that might be something that you want to look into and work on before you start moving any further. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but I thought that that no, was... but to point it out, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that makes sense. Today, or maybe we'll see. I don't know. But um, 
So uh, your manager, Olivia, says that she needs to see more proactiveness from you. You're surprised because from your perspective, you've been putting in an extra effort to come up with ideas to improve your team's performance and output. You've been sharing those ideas with other team members consist consistent consistently. What would you do? Hmm. That's a good one. So your manager, Olivia, mm -hmm. says she needs you to be more proactive and she needs that from you. But you think that you've been being proactive oh, in see, doing it. I got to take it in the scenario outside of work because for me, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to go on Indeed. <laughs> like, so, like, for real. But I mean, I also, too, I would just say, I would honestly just be like, let me put it in this perspective. I would state my case, plain and simple. You know what I'm saying? And if they didn't like that case, then I can see where I'd be like, okay, it's my time to exit because I have no problem piecing out. And so uh, I would just be like, oh, but these are the things that I've done. You know what I mean? Let me show you these receipts. This is what I've done to be proactive, you know, and kind of whether it's scheduling a meeting to review it or to go over it, but kind of clear that out and whether or not she thinks that's good enough or not, you know what I'm saying? That would kind of let me know my place. That's how in within that scenario, I would handle it. Um, my receipts. <laughs> she said my receipts, right? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. It's one of those scenarios probably where <laughs> I probably, if I know that I've been doing my dang thing, I probably... And this may I may need to work on this. I will probably be a little triggered. However, mm -hmm. I, I'm in a space to know that there's a good there's a good way to handle things and there's a bad way to handle things. Like I ain't gonna flip out and say, "Look, Olivia," you know, like you know, whatever. But at the same time, yeah. Uh, yeah, receipts are good, <laughs> but um, I think. For me, I think I would probably have to, I would probably stew on that a little bit. And it probably end up coming back down to the, the receipts to show you what I've been doing. But like, I wouldn't, I can't react to that right away because mm -hmm. I'm in my feelings, to be honest. Like, mm -hmm. you don't see yeah. what the hell I'm doing? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> like, to your point, I, I will say, like, I have a client right now where he's like, this this that and the third and like I I brought out the receipts once or twice and he still did not hear me but again like for my, my thing is like I will never rush to like convince you of my value it's too much I've done it it's too tiring if you don't get it that I got it and even as a client I will drop you I will drop you like because that's just what it is I'll make sure that I have another account to bring in because I care that my account managers have work um but like and it, it rarely gets to that but like it's like talking to a brick wall and it's like for me when we sign up if anytime I oh I don't know who this is anytime I um yeah. interact with anybody like it, it's just like especially when it gets disrespectful which is kind of the case with this one in particular but um so that's another reason but yeah, it's, I don't have to convince you my value. I, I'll, I'll leave the door open rather to like, okay, well, you don't have to restart. We don't have to do this because some people are just used to like friction. You know what I'm saying? And there is no convincing. And I know I'm doing a good job. I literally showed receipts of like, you're in the green. We've gotten you in the double digits of thousands, tens of thousands of views, tens of thousands of engagement, and it still didn't resonate. And so there's nothing you can do at that point because that's what I specialize in. So it's like, yeah, I, won't, I will never convince somebody of my value and I will chunk it up real quick. So that's just, yeah. It, but that it, that has its flaws too, don't get me wrong. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, I could have stuck it out. You know what I mean? Like, Brittany, because I, I, I do think for me, that's a character flaw because uh, it, it just... I look back in my past just from even like I think it's because I moved around a lot as a kid like we were never I never had like long-term friends long-term family we would always go to grandma's house cousins all of that but like we moved every single year literally every single year not even on some military stuff nothing like that but like we were just never in the same place so I never needed to you know 
build a relationship long term and that's why I you know value our friendship so much because I want to be that loyal person and even with my husband like he showed me loyalty and I was like ah so you went through it hmm. okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying okay. no hmm. you know so working on it mental note like, business yeah it's a little I say a little easier <laughs> All right. and then it, okay so it's wild that she said that like that because uh even with G's point of view um, he's like, uh, ask for clarity on that. Um, yeah, like uh, yeah. to figure out, you know, what what exactly they, what exactly are they going with that or coming up with that assumption that you're not doing, you're not being proactive. But um, like you said, you can only do so much. You're not in the business of convincing, right? Not in the business of convincing. If I can show you and prove to you that this is what we're doing, and this is how we've done, and this is what we're, you got 10 minutes. Um, now I want to upgrade Zoom. Okay. <laughs> Four minutes is enough. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you for this free time. Um, <laughs> but yes, if anybody's listening, use all your free tools. All okay. the free tools. All of them. All of them. <laughs> Keep that overhead low, but okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So yeah, like pretty much Olivia just gotta come with what was she like? Where, where you get this from? Where where, where 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 we going with this? Like I mean, but not in a rude way, obviously, you know. But you're right. Like there has to like this a uh, uh, character flaw. Like um, some people are just wired to want that that combativeness that that they feed off of that like there's no drama in the situation and there's no there's no progression or something so yeah mm-hmm. all right well this Man, is I love interesting. i'm done with this route yeah with the scenarios <laughs> yeah. y'all for those watching we were not sure how to continue with the scenario process right. it was a lot of fun <laughs> now watched it unfold like Right before yeah. your eyes, like yeah. this, is how gonna, this is how we're gonna do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you guys for watching. More to come, and um, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I don't know what it looks like, but anyway, right. <laughs> <laughs> I always look weird when I try to be extra. Like if I just let it flow, it'd be all right. But anyway, yes. See you next week. See you. <laughs>